It is the final conversation of the 2023 football season with BYU team captain Connor Pay. We react to the season that was for BYU falling short of a bowl game, coaching changes, and a whole lot more. It's all ahead on Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the podcast. And a big thank you to all of you once again uh, for making the original daily BYU football podcast your daily listen. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. Uh, it's daily fantasy sports. Sports made easy. All right, let's bring in BYU team captain Connor Pay for his weekly conversation here on the show. Uh, wish uh, we were talking about a bowl game here, but alas, we are not. But Connor, thanks for taking the time. As always, how are you, sir? I'm good. It's fun. Glad to do the show one more time this year. Well, and we'll obviously uh, revisit it as, as things come. Uh, I know you ultimately have some decisions to make here about your future, but I want to start off by looking back before we look forward and get uh, your reaction. You guys were up 18 points at halftime at Oklahoma State. They come rumbling back in that second half, and you guys were oh so close, it felt like, to notching that elusive sixth win. Just give me your overall sense of how the game went against the Cowboys. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm – I'm proud of the way we came out in that game and, and, you know, starting off hot and competing and, you know, just unfortunately weren't able to sustain it and weren't able to move the ball down the field consistently in the second half, really until the final drive, just Mm -hmm. to get into field goal range. And then, you know, thankfully we scored in that first overtime and then unfortunately turned to, turn the ball over in that second one and you know obviously it's disappointing to not you know make it to a bowl game you know five five and seven feels a lot worse than six and six and so it's uh you know obviously it was disappointing and to to have that lead at halftime and to and you know to lose it and end up losing that in double overtime that that was hard that stung I wanted to ask you just about the reaction in the locker room after the game because you know your season's over just like that. And that, that's a gut punch, I would imagine, uh, ending a season on a five-game losing streak and obviously in a game where you guys had a lead at, at the end of the first half. It must have – I guess it was probably two different feelings. Like at halftime, you're probably thinking, okay, let's keep doing our thing. We'll punch our ticket to the postseason. And then after the game, suddenly it's like season's over just like that. Yeah, it was pretty somber, as you'd expect, and – you know, a lot of tears, um, but, you know, it was more just, you know, thanking the seniors and, and you know, the guys who uh, wouldn't be coming back and, you know, because that's the last time you'll be in uniform with them. Uh, and so you kind of want to cherish those last few minutes you have together in the locker room because, you know, you're never, you're never going to get it again. You know, you're never going to be suiting up with those guys. And, uh, you know, it sucks that we couldn't send off the seniors uh, in a better way than that. So that's kind of what we did in the in the locker room a little bit is just make sure everyone made made it around to all the seniors in the group and make sure you give them a hug and tell them how grateful we were for those their sacrifices over the last four or five years or however long they've been there. So. What do you think that you guys will take from this season in terms of the falling short of a bowl game that you guys can use? Uh, even if you decide that you're moving on, I don't, I'm not going to put you on the spot on that decision. But regardless, going into this offseason, what can you and your teammates uh, take from this season that will fuel you through the offseason workouts leading up to spring camp, et cetera? Well, this is – I mean, for me, this is the first time I have not played in a bowl game. Okay. You know, and not, not having a bowl game sucks. You know, it's, it's terrible. And, uh, you know, I, I would hope that it would just, and I think it will, and I think it already has just based on the last couple of days kind of, you know, 
a little a little fire at least in the in the young guys who maybe didn't have as much of a role on the team this year who will next season um and their desire to improve it and make it better um and uh you know it's i mean you can you can take a lot from this season there's a lot that you can learn from this was our first experience playing a conference schedule mm-hmm. and and now you know we kind of we kind of know what that's like and, and what it takes week in and week out and uh you know sometimes there's some there are hard lessons to learn and uh you know because we were it's wild to think about but we were three or four plays away from you know almost eight wins this season you know and it's and and we were also two or three plays away from two or three wins this season and that's just that's what this conference is and that's what this conference has been um you know the the margins are razor thin uh for error and and you'll teams in this league will make you pay for your mistakes and we just couldn't get out of our own way um you know at certain points during the year and i think uh and i think that is something that those things can definitely be taken into the off season um and for next year's team to be able to learn from that and you know come in more prepared for what it's going to take to compete in conference play now, Monday, we learned that uh, offensive line coach Daryl Funk as well as tight ends coach Steve Clark were both let go from their positions. They will not be a part of the football program uh, going forward here. So, obviously, that is your position, Coach, and Coach Funk that was let go. What was your reaction to seeing him uh, be let go from the football program? I mean, unfortunately, not surprised with just how the season's gone and, you know, nobody feels good about that. And I mean – you know, the, the initial feeling was just gratitude towards those two, you know, for everything that they they uh, did do for for the program, you know, and I think uh, the internet, social media, and all that stuff is kind of a cesspool of, of negativity, and they want to focus on everything that they didn't do for the program, but I think, uh, you know, in a time like that, it's important to express your thankfulness and your gratitude for what they did do and what they did bring to the program. And, and, you know, understanding that change is, change is kind of a part of life. And, uh, sometimes in order to, you gotta, you gotta make some changes for the good of the group, you know, and that's, uh, that's sometimes a hard thing, but it it happens for players as well. You know, it, you know, position or positions change, starters and backups change all for the good of the team. And it's no different with, with, uh, position coaches, you know, and it's, it's a college football is a cutthroat world. And so it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not very forgiving, but I wish both of those guys the, the best of luck. And I appreciate everything they did. Now, you've gone through a coaching transition already in your career, if I'm not mistaken, when Coach Grimes ultimately left and went to Baylor. Uh, what what is And Coach Mateos obviously left alongside him, who was your offensive line coach specifically at that time. Uh, from your experience with that, uh, what what is the biggest uh, challenge or, uh, I guess, biggest issue with regards to keeping a position group uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing when you don't necessarily have a position coach in place? Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think – on that i think the culture of the room has to come from the players you know and i think uh and so that we we have a culture of toughness and accountability and excellence that that o-line coach has to come into Mm -hmm. you know not the other way around or obviously he'll have his way that he does things and the way he coaches and we'll embrace all of that but that also he has the culture of the BYU line that he has to come into that we've had for the last few years and that we kind of lost a little bit this season. And, uh, you know, I definitely think that um, that's something that can change and uh, that that's something that we can get back. And, you know, I think uh, this kind of this opportunity for a clean slate is a great, uh, a great way to do that. Um, and so, you know, right now I'm just trying to keep, uh, keep the guys together and, uh, 
you know, help them prepare for for this next season and, you know, attack in the offseason because the road – the road to a Big 12 championship next season started three days ago. Yeah. You know, and, and already getting in the film room, getting on the field and working on some things. And so, um, you know, I think that's what kind of carries you into uh, your next position coach. And, uh, you know, I think that's why the transition was so smooth with Coach Funk was because that was a culture driven by us. And we had, and we'd had an established culture as an O-line and we were able to ride that through 2021 and 2022. And unfortunately we lost it a little bit in, in, in 2023. All right. I wanted to talk to you about the guys, kind of get your evaluation of the O-line as a whole. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, before we do that though, do need to get a word in on our friends over at Price Picks. We've been uh, talking about Price Picks for quite some time, but they are the largest daily, daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They want to make it easy and exciting to have fun playing daily fantasy sports. And the best part is it's not you competing against hundreds, if not thousands of other people trying to get a piece of a pie. You just compete against you versus the computer in terms of the overall numbers. You select more or less than on two or six, two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. The best part is you can turn 10 bucks into $250 uh, with our friends over at Prize Picks. All you do, once again, select two players, pick more or less on the projected stats and place your entry. The best part is with basketball season here, you can do both football and basketball in a combined a combo projection across the two sports called the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, let's say LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made in an individual game and overall receptions in a game as well. The best part is they feature Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So get started today, my friends, and get over to uh, PricePicks.com slash Locked On College. Use the promo code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. You heard that right? Uh, go to PricePicks.com slash Locked On College. Use that promo code Locked On College and cash in on that first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. It's all courtesy of your friends at Price Picks Daily Fantasy Sports made easy. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at UCCU. The UCCU mobile banking app is paying your entire family to learn about money. Of course, all of us want to be smarter when it comes to our finances, and we all maybe need a little bit of refresher from time to time. The best part is learn and earn is breaking down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that accrue, and they can be redeemed for gift cards to many stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. The best part is their age-appropriate content for every member of the family. Y'all can track your progress on leaderboards and competing head-to-head -head against one another, and it's all available inside the UCCU mobile banking app. So play at any time, anywhere. And of course, the more you play, the more you learn. And as a result, as a result the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of your friends over at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Uh, continuing on now here with Connor Pay on our weekly conversation. And uh, Connor, we were just talking about uh, culture and uh, what you established. But I wanted to uh, talk specifically about the offensive line and your evaluation because you were out there all season long alongside these guys uh, playing at two different positions uh, for you in 2023. So uh, I wanted to start off. How would you evaluate the overall interior uh, line play? Speaking of you, uh, uh, Miley, uh, Waylon Lapuaho, even Caleb Etienne at points, like, how do you feel the interior offensive line play was this season overall now in hindsight? Um, I think obviously it, uh, it could have been better. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with where it trended. At the end of the season, I thought we were playing at a pretty high level overall. And, uh, um, but I think, you know, with changes in personnel and guys getting shuffled around and moved and stuff, that made it a little tough to kind of get the, get the ball rolling a little bit. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, overall, I'm proud of those guys and, and the way they played. And, um, you know, for Paul to come through and he battled through some injuries and played and, you know, brought some brought some guts to our line a little bit, and kind of put himself in a in a good position to move on now and and uh, make a run at the next level. And uh, 
you know, and Wayland for to come in as a young guy and and earn the job and and you know play pretty well for the majority of the season. You know, I'm really proud of those guys. Now, obviously, uh, there are younger players that be moving up the depth chart, at least in theory. Uh, are is there a young player or two? Because I know that uh, you guys didn't have a ton of rotation along that offensive line. Uh, during the season, is there a young guy that you're kind of saying, okay, that that dude's coming and he's going to be a really, really good one? You know, I mean, I kind of feel that way about you know the majority of those of those uh, uh, young guys, you know, because multiple of them have been in the program now for a couple of seasons, um, and you know we're going to have some new ones coming in soon, and I think there's everyone in the room has a chance to move up in this next season, you know, um, and, you know, just, I think with where the O-line is at from a personnel perspective, uh, you know, there really, there really is options for dudes everywhere to kind of move up and earn a spot either as a starter or in the two deep. And so you can really kind of point at any one of those guys who was on the two deep this year and traveled and even some guys who weren't that could make a push for it this next season. You can say it's Trevor pay. He's going to come in off, off, <laughs> off now. Trev's going to have to come in and earn that. He is. Uh, for those who don't know, Trevor pay is Connor's younger brother. He's currently serving an admission and will be joining the program uh, here in the, uh, during the off season. Now I wanted to talk to you about the tackles as well. Kingsley obviously had all that hype coming into the season. I thought he performed uh, fairly, fairly admirably battling, battling through some injuries himself. Uh, Caleb Etienne started out on the outside, then moved to the interior, allowing Braden Kime to come in. Uh, how would you evaluate the tackle play for you guys? You know, I'm I'm proud of those guys too, man. I think uh, I think especially the back half of the season that Braden really did a good job, and that his play trended up each week. And you know, with and with Kingsley too, you know, just uh, um, being you know kind of the consistent and uh, playing at a high level. And you know, so I'm I think I think both of those guys did did a really good job. And you know, I know Caleb. Uh, Caleb had his struggles, but he also had his moments where he he did really well. And so, you know, I'm I'm, <clears throat> I'm proud of those guys and the way they they fought through the season because, um, you know, I think uh, I think especially for us as a group when, you know, when we were down and things weren't going well, and you know, you kind of you could start to kind of feel the vibes that change was on the way that would have been a really easy time for the group to kind of can it and be like, you know what, we're not even going to push through and kind of just survive till the end of the season. And I'm really proud of the group as a whole for, for battling back and, and coming out and really kind of establishing our will in those last two games, uh, especially in the run game for us, which is, you know, something we pride ourselves on and, and, you know, so overall, I'm, I'm proud of the guys. I'm, I'm proud of the group for how they fought throughout the season when it wasn't going, you know, the way we had hoped. Because everybody, everybody can be hyped to play and, you know, be fired up and flying around when you're playing well. That's easy. Anybody can do that. You know, but it's it, it takes a little something different than when you're kind of down on the ground and getting kicked and, you know, to kind of fight back from that. So that's one thing, you know, even though the results on the scoreboard weren't what we wanted, I'm, I am proud of that. Now you talked about uh, how uh, Caleb, he kind of, he went back and forth, but we talked with him late in the season and he talked about the move into the inside at guard. And he, he, he told the media, I'm coming back. He'd walked on senior day. And uh, of course the question was, well, you saw that LSU, he said he's planning on coming back to play for BYU and he plans on playing guard. And he used the term, it gave him a new lease on life as an offensive lineman. Why is that from your perspective? Why would that give him a, a new opportunity in a way? Well, because I think most people don't realize how different every position is. You know, it's uh, I mean, moving from moving from right tackle to right guard is like moving from receiver to tight end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not uh, it's not the same. You know, and it might it might look the same. You know, on TV, yeah. and it might look like you're doing similar things, but your angles, your techniques, the timing, all of it's different. The muscle memory. Um, and so it, it is kind of like a fresh start in, in a way. Um, and, and for him, 
you know, I, I think we've talked about this a couple times, kind of getting in that guard space where he can just utilize his size and strength. Um, I, I think he, uh, that gave him a lot of confidence doing that. And, uh, you know, and so, it, it, cause it is, it is so new and it's so different that a new lease on life is not a bad way to describe it. So. All right. And that, I just wondered about that because you mentioned the fact that it's a very different thing. And he talked about it. He's like, it's actually, you're not playing as much in as much space is the, is probably the, is the term I think he used. And you're right. When you're a tackle, I, I've talked with enough guys on the offensive line in the past uh, as a tackle, you have a responsibility to guard a lot more of the acreage, I guess you should say on the offensive line versus you as a center or a guard where it's kind of, you're playing in a phone book as they say. Yeah, no, that's definitely the truth. I think, for the interior guys, the bigger the bigger challenge is is power and and size, whereas uh, you know on the outside it's a little more you know you just have more space to work with and have to handle you know distance a little more. Now you mentioned uh, that you felt like you guys were trending up at the end of the season, and I would agree. I thought you guys had some of your best performances in offensive line, especially in the last two games against both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Uh, what what do you think changed, or what what did you guys finally figure out at, at the tail end of the season that uh, you can uh, obviously look back on? But then I guess a two part question: What can you take as you move forward here as an offensive line? Um, you know, I think those last couple weeks um it was you know kind of your backs against the wall a little bit and it was it was kind of for us it was like screw it we're gonna do this and you know and a rod was on the same page where he's like look this is this is what we're gonna run like you don't have to think about anything else just go get this done um and so i think uh you know, just that mindset and kind of simplifying a few things um, made it a little easier for us to just sink into combo blocks and do some of those things and get guys moving off the line. Because if we can give Aiden just a little bit of space, the dude will get five or six yards. And and so I think uh, that was that was a big thing for us. And, um, you know, just a, an emphasis on just doing your job. Right. You don't have to worry because was it's easy when things aren't going well to start worrying about all kinds of other stuff mm -hmm. and uh, and kind of get away from what is most important and what your job is on that specific play. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of fall into that a lot at center since I'm making the calls and kind of telling people where to go and making checks and doing things like that. And, you know, it's easy for your mind to go elsewhere when at the end of the day you have one job on this play and. And, uh, and so I think just a renewed focus on that as well as a group, uh, I think those are kind of the things that made the difference for us. All right. So if I were to ask you, and this goes across, like I said, this goes across five positions. This might be hard for you to do, but if I were to ask you to give you your offensive line, you yourself, uh, as well as the other guys on the line, if I were to ask you to give yourself a letter grade for how the season overall went, what would you say? <laughs> That's a hard question. I don't know if I'll be able to, I don't know if I'll be able to slap a letter grade on it because so much changes. There's so much variety mm -hmm. and there's so many other variables. It would be easier to do it game by game. Um, but. Okay. So uh, can, let me interject then. So what would you say the best game you guys, your best performances in old line was of the season? Do you have one in mind? I'd probably say Oklahoma. Okay. And then maybe the worst. Hmm. There, there were a couple in there that were not good. Um, hmm. That's a good question. I mean, Sam Houston's got to be in there. Okay. So that was just a that was a pretty rough game for the offense in general. Uh, but that one that one didn't go very well, and then. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard when you have. It sucks that I have this many to choose from. Uh, <laughs> it's a fair. I don't, know if I, could, I don't know if I could pick out another. Probably, probably West, not West Virginia. Actually, I, ironically, 
we actually graded out pretty high as a group. Okay. From West Virginia. There was just some other stuff going on in that game, but um, I don't know. Sam Houston is the first one that pops into my head where it's like after that game, I was kind of just like, oh, man. Well, that, I guess that, that's the dichotomy. You, the, the, the season opener, the home opener, you had, you, you turn maybe your, your least, uh, your bet, your worst performance of the season, and then the home finale against Oklahoma, your best. So I guess there was a progression there in a way. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, I think it was probably more like this than, you know, but it was like, it was like this. <laughs> and we eventually made it up there a little bit. So started low, ebbed and flowed, but finally, as you as you said, you got it. You guys got it. You got it going at the end. All right. So, uh, thank you for that evaluation. Now, I, I want to finish off today's show by asking you just a couple of questions. As you kind of like now turn your attention to the off season and all that type of stuff. Got a couple of listener questions as well. We'll get to all that as we continue on right here on Locked On Cougars. Real quick though, before we get to that, let's talk about our friends over at LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is here for you guys. If you have, if you're a hiring manager, you're a business owner, no matter what it is, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn jobs. They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team. And they do it faster and for free. You can go online right now to LinkedIn, uh, set up your job posting and then add that uh, job posting to your profile. LinkedIn is not just another job, job board, excuse me. It is a vast network of more than a billion with a B billion professionals it makes you the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy. In fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate candidates within the first 24 hours of their posting. LinkedIn knows what small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. And thankfully with Link- LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So start today, my friends, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post that job for free terms and conditions apply. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your day. Thank you for making it your first listen, my friends. I want to remind you that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel now. I uh, also want to remind you guys, if you guys want to uh, get some tickets uh, to go out to BYU and Fresno State back, basketball uh this friday night at the marriott's uh, not the marriott center excuse me the delta center in downtown salt lake city i do have a pair of tickets that are up for grabs all you got to do is you essentially got to email us locked on byu at gmail.com expressing your interest and also show a, a screenshot of you being subscribed to the show whichever way you consume it whether it's through regular podcast feeds you're watching it on youtube just so show us that you're subscribed and you'll be entered to win Simple as that. All right. Uh, as we wrap up here with Connor Pegg, uh, Connor, obviously uh, the attention now turns to 2024. And you talked about the fact that you're already seeing guys have kind of that fire in their belly and motivated uh, to get things right. Uh, there was a question that was sent in uh, via Stephanie. She said, I wanted to ask Connor, how weird does it feel to have the season over in the month of November versus it ending somewhere maybe mid to late December? It's very strange. Very strange. I've obviously never experienced it before. And so you kind of come back on, you know, Monday and Tuesday and you're like, man, what do we do? <laughs> like, uh, I don't like, do we have a calendar? Is there a schedule? Like what, what, I, what, I don't know what's going on. And so, um, yeah, it's definitely been strange. It's definitely been strange. Um, and so, uh, obviously, you know, we, we met as a team on Monday and, uh, and now kind of the off season is in full swing. So now I know, I know that in January you guys start uh, hot and heavy with the workouts with the strength coaches, but in the interim here, cause school's not over quite yet. So you guys are still in probe, obviously finishing up school. What is the next month or so roughly look like in terms of what you guys will be doing as a team? Um, there'll definitely be some, uh, some running and lifting okay. uh, as a team. Just because you can't you can't just do nothing for six weeks leading into when January starts. And so uh, you know, the emphasis for guys who played a lot this season is rehab on your body. Um and, and getting some some of your injuries or bumps and bruises right. Um, but also, you know, kind of keeping your body going and uh so so you don't get smacked in the face come January when we start. And so there'll definitely be some uh 
some strength and conditioning done over the next few weeks, then get a couple weeks off at Christmas time and then hitting it again. Uh, how did you do injury wise this season? I, I don't want you to reveal anything you don't want to reveal, but how did you do physically? <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't have anything that kept me from playing or, and, uh, so the, the list, um, on, on, not unfortunately, but the list is kind of long, <laughs> but, uh, you know, nothing that kept me off the field. So I'm grateful for that. But yeah, it's been a lot. Of, it's been a lot of doctor's appointments over the last, uh, week week and a half like so like you just like the stuff piled up and then you finally kind of just unload at the end of the season be like all right i uh, got this and that and this and okay a little bit a little bit but a lot of it it was not major like yeah the 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 biggest things especially for offensive line is like broken or dislocated fingers those happen like every single week there's not a whole lot you can do about that it's gonna happen um and so, yeah, probably had maybe a dozen of those, but it's, I mean, for me, thankfully, I don't really have anything. I have this weird thing going on with my throat. I guess I got punched or something and my larynx movement isn't right. And my left vocal cord kind of stopped working. And so I have to go, I see a specialist in a couple of weeks for that. So I got to get that figured. That's the weirdest one. I don't know how that one happened. And so hopefully you, the, you don't recall getting punched in the, in the throat. I do. I do. Okay. But, but like it, it, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Like it uh -huh. hurt and it was yeah. like, nah, but then it was fine after. And then I just kind of felt like I had something in my throat and I wanted to just check my throat, make sure nothing was going on. And then they're kind of like, no, this is some weird things going on here. So we'll see how that goes. Wow. Um, yeah, I just, I got some, got some elbow stuff to take care of. You yeah. know, got, MRIs next week and stuff like that. So, but nothing major, thankfully. So overall, overall, I feel pretty good. Okay. You say not major. You just said you had a dozen dislocated or broken fingers. <laughs> Sorry. That, that sounds painful at, at minimum. Okay. Like four or five of them were like the same finger. Okay. And so it's, I mean, just in different weeks. Okay. <clears throat> and so, but that's a, that's the life of an old lineman. I don't think my pinkies will ever be the same. You oh, know? geez. Anyone so, watching on YouTube just saw that. They're they're a little bent over right now. A little bent over. But that's uh I think that's probably permanent okay. for me. But that's but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh well, Connor, uh, I know that you have some decisions to make in, in coming weeks. We'd love to have you back on the show uh once you decide and announce however you uh do, decide to do that. Uh, we'd love yeah. to have you back on. I know that you talked earlier this season that uh should you decide to move on, you have some ideas for what the program should be doing moving forward. Maybe we'll have to do an episode on that as well. But <laughs> Yeah. Uh, just also say this, uh you have an open invitation anytime you want to come back on the podcast. We are happy to have you back on. I'd be happy to come back and do it. So yeah, I should be, I should know what I'm doing pretty soon. A lot of it's, it's kind of a waiting game for me. Just wait until you get grades back from the NFL and uh, you just kind of see what you want to do. Cause the NFL is a weird thing. You kind of got to strike when the iron's hot. And so if I get some stuff back that suggests I should go, you kind of got to take it. Cause you never know what can happen in any given year. But if it doesn't point that way, then uh, then we'll, we'll go from there and see if we need to run it back one more time. All right. Well, Connor, any final mm -hmm. thoughts to close out this edition of the podcast? Nope. Just thank you to the fans for sticking with us all season long. And, you know, through this transition to, to Power 5, the team's going to improve every year. And, you know, you know BYU is going to be a staple Big 12 championship contender for – for years to come. And, you know, as more money comes in and as the staff expands and things get upgraded all around the football program and things that things will improve. And you're already seeing the changes that Kalani has been willing to make to, to help us get better as a team. And that's not going to change from year to year. He's willing to do whatever it takes to put the team in the best position to win. So appreciate you guys sticking with us. And, you know, the, the future is bright as, as bleak as it may feel. You know, right now, the future the future is bright for BYU football. So, Well, Connor, thanks as always. And like I said, we will catch up with you again soon. Thanks for doing this every week, and I uh, appreciate you being a part of it. No problem. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, that is Connor Pay. I'm Jay Catch. A big thank you once again to all of you for your support of the podcast. As always, want to remind you guys, uh, if you want to enter to win those tickets, please email us lockedonbyu at gmail.com. We'll get you uh, entered to win. Uh, coming up on tomorrow, shall we continue our position group debriefings, looking back at the season that was for BYU. And all, obviously, a big thank you to all of you uh, for your for patronage of the show. Thank you for making your first listen of the day, as well as being everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your Wednesday. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.